98 Not Out, sponsored by Shepherd Neem, proud supporters of cricket in Essex. Big 98 Not Out welcome to former Kent and England batsman, now Sky Sports cricket commentator, Mr Rob Key. Keezy, how are you? I'm good actually, I'm just at my daughter's playing cricket, I'm just <clears throat> just watching that, um, and it's, no, I'm good, playing a bit of golf, uh, good to see cricket back, and health is good, it's all, at this point, touch wood going okay. Yeah. Is she batting, bowling, or a uh, decent... She's down at fine leg at the moment, um, more, it might actually, she's under 13, so you could probably describe it more as backstop. <laughs> um... <laughs> You were especially slip though, weren't you? Uh, well, I was a mid on because I couldn't concentrate. <laughs> slip. But you said, well, people say, "Why didn't you like first slip?" I said, "Because you had to watch the ball too much." <laughs> Which I, I thought you had to do that all the time. To be fair, but um, no, she's like a backstop. I'd say. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so cricket's getting going again. Um, what can we, or what do you expect to see uh, between now and, let's say, October, when the season sort of slated to to go on to? Uh, well, the internet is quite a packed international calendar. We got the next Test match, the decider, then it's into the one days against Ireland, then Pakistan in a Test series, ODIs, Australia. So, so that's full on, and I'm hoping we see a bit of county cricket. I think we might see a bit of the blast. That would be good, mm-hmm. and a bit of four day cricket for the you know. But it, I just think that counties almost, you know, the ECB have to not worry too much about symmetrical scheduling, you know, so everyone plays everyone the same amount of times and it's all fair and it's just, just go and play. Yeah. You know, just have a game. However it is, if Essex, you know, Essex and Kent are near, you know, if it means they play twice because that's logistically much better, let them play so we just get to see some cricket. You know, and if you can get a few people in to watch, that would be fantastic as well. I mean, it'd be a bonus from thinking that considering we thought we'd get very little, yeah. um, county cricket in particular, but hopefully, uh, you know, we're not too far away from seeing some domestic cricket. That would be great. I think you're right, because we've just run through um, the Essex League cricket that was played last weekend, um, and they've taken the approach there of um, keeping teams that are geographically near to each other and ability-wise uh, matched up. Um, and I think it's probably the sensible way forward. I, th- I think this year, as you say, cricket fans aren't particularly bothered about seeing great matches or outstanding performance. They just want to see cricket being played again. And if it all comes down to local rivalry, as we know, there have been, there've been some fantastic games between Essex and Kent down the years, um, particularly T20. Uh, which I think yeah. Essex have won every single one. Is that? Is that? <laughs> oh, I don't think that's. I'm not sure that's exactly true. But I remember going down. I mean, even uh, Chelmsford for me. Hmm. That I mean, what do you call it? Fortress Chelmsford. It's exactly what it feels like when you yeah. turn up there. I mean, even the Eagle gets. Uh, people have a pop of the Eagle <laughs> mascot at Chelmsford. <laughs> and I remember them sort of going round the ground on the tunnel. Anyone swearing will be sent out I, mean, I let one through my legs and a whole chorus the entire crowd was sort of swearing at me at one stage <laughs> giving me a volley of abuse um, but it's also one of the great grounds to, it's one of the experiences that you take away with you when you finish playing you know yeah. you, you remember those moments you know in footballers must have it all the time when you go to Liverpool or wherever else it is Sellers you know Park. that and Chel- Chelmsford was one of them where you just you know, it, it was it made you. You know, it was a great fun place to go and play, and a very good pitch as well. I think you're right. I think when we've had players uh, on this show that from various counties and even various countries, um, all have uh, fine words to say about T uh, Twenty Nights at Chelmsford, and I think you're right. And you know, it goes back quite a long way. It's not a recent thing. I can remember uh, watching Andrew Simons playing down there. Um, and he was brilliant because he was getting a volley from the crowd, but he was giving it back in equal <laughs> measures. Uh, and it was brilliant because the whole thing ended up being really sort of good humoured and the sting was taken out of all of it. Um, and I think when the game finished, he sort of came down, was quite happy signing scorecards and posing for selfies <laughs> or whatever. Uh, and so in, in that respect, everyone sort of went home with, uh, with smiles on their faces. Yeah, yeah, you'd say, wouldn't you? I mean, Chelmsford has 
along with Taunton, I think, has been the ground that, that's got T20 right from the start. Mm. It's always, you know, it's not always been a great crowd at the Oval. The Oval does it brilliantly now. Yeah. But I've played at the Oval in front of, you know, 2,000 people, whatever. Now it's 25,000. Chelmsford and Taunton, the same, have done, have just got it from, from yeah. day one. They've got T20, and it, you know, and that's why we remember going and playing there. That's and often they call it the Battle of the Bridge. Where I was like, "What are we going to do with the bridge? <laughs> uh, who, wants, who wants a bridge?" But anyway, you know, but I think it's a, you know, I think it, it, as a Kent player, it was often the decider as well. It seemed they'd sort of work it out. So whether it was at Canterbury or or Chelmsford, that Kent Essex game was was a chance to yeah. go through somewhere. Particularly when, it, we won, know, when we won the Div 2 title down at Canterbury. Well, and there was a year when there was a curse of <laughs> Grant Flower, one year when you beat us. We beat in the court in the semi final of the T20, and Ravi Bopara was one of my best mates. <laughs> so, Rav, you know, we had one over you there, and then at Essex, it beat us in the CMG final at Lords. And then, and Grant Flower got runs and got you home, and then in the Pro 40, I think. Last game we had to try and win that, and, it, and Grant Flower did us again there. <laughs> you know, they, but they're always they're the games I remember. You know, I don't remember playing against a lot of counties, but I'll never forget. Yeah. Essex I might have, like that. I might have to apologise for that one because I, I sponsored Grant a pint for every run he scored in his last season, <laughs> and uh, I'm sure you, you, along with everyone, heard it cost me a few pints that year. <laughs> <laughs> You should do that with everyone. Uh, I'm not sure I could afford to again. <laughs> might, might have got away with it this summer. Now, Mark uh, Mark Butcher said we've got to mention your new book out, because it's, I think, it's your second book, isn't it? Oi Key, Tales of a Journeyman Cricketer. Yeah, that's right, yeah. You don't have to mention that. Well, he, and he went further and said, it's actually really good, but don't say that on air. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> no way Butcher's read it, but he's a good fella. Um, no, I you know why it's to so, do you know why it's called Oi Key? No, go on. So in my test debut, one of Essex's favourite sons, probably after Ronnie and Ashley Cowan and Mark Isler and 50 other names, was Nasser. <laughs> and Nasser was a scary captain back then for us younger kids, Andrew Flintoff, people like that. And I'm sort of in the flips. And Nasser shouts out when I'm turning to Fred, my best mate, Freddie Flintoff, and he just shouts out, Oi, key, you fat so-and-so. <laughs> I didn't put you there to chat to your fat mate all day. Concentrate you, you know, and he just <laughs> volleyed me from mid off. Gang Gooley sort of looked at me laughing, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh. And Fred just turned around and said, don't drop one now, Bob. I said, no, you're not wrong there. So yeah, I said to Nasser, I said, I'm going to call it Oike, you know. And I didn't get away with the whole thing. But uh, now my big mate, Vlad, is. Um, yeah, uh, the title of my book. Well, he's, he's such a he's such a happy-go-lucky knockabout pl- person <laughs> these days on Sky, isn't he? <laughs> he is one of my favourite. I have to say, he is one of my favourite people. I think in the world, and I never thought I'd say that when I was, <laughs> you know, a young twenty-three-year-old. But you know, he had a job to do. Nass. He was a very, very good captain. Yeah, a very well, tough captain. I was I was a contemporary of his at club level. Uh, oh yeah, good luck with that. He must have thrown <laughs> his bat a bit, didn't he? <laughs> Yeah, he, he didn't mind the acerbic comment, you know. You've just, you've just got out to a ball that you couldn't do anything with. I managed to try and get out of the way of it, and, but yet yeah, managed to knuckle it to the <laughs> wiki keeper and you trudge off and then just stood there on the boundaries, Mr Burns. And, <laughs> <laughs> and yes, uh, yeah, he doesn't use those words on the telly anymore, does he? <laughs> no, he, he's a brilliant... He's a brilliant commentator, one of the best in the world. And he, you know, he's also, what I like about him is, is that, as you know, he's not one of those blokes who's going to have any small talk. So he'll sort of walk in now. Hmm. And you might not have seen him for a few weeks, although we're on WhatsApp all the time where he's abusing me. And he's like, all right, mate. But there's no, like, taxi driver. You know, when you get in a taxi and you're like, all right, mate, you've been busy tonight, you know, and you, you, you feel you have to talk for the next the duration yeah. of the journey. Yeah. NASA just won't say a word. No. You know, and it, 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 there's one I said to him, you can't see a game of golf in Seven Oaks. And oh. he just went, don't like golf, don't like you, don't like Seven Oaks. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. 
you know, and I thought I, I love him for that, really. I think. I think when I was 23, I used to think he was being serious and just thought, oh my god, you know, what's this like? like <laughs> you know, and whereas now you sort of realise, and he, if I ask him for something, so like, he's so generous. You listen to NASA because his word is, you know, he's a one of the most. You know, He's one of the best pundits commentators in the world, but mm. he's very generous for us, especially me who didn't play much international cricket. Where he'll say, oh, that point that Deasy made, or Rob Key did, or Nick Knight, or, you know, some of the lesser cricketers. Mm. He almost gives us validation at times. He's very generous like that, because he could just do it his own way. But he's very quick to praise people along the way, which he wasn't as a player. Well, <laughs> next time you're on your WhatsApp group, can you point out to him that you've been on 98 Not Out, Charles Dagnall's been on 98 Not Out, Mark Butcher's been on 98 Not Out. That's Ebony Rains from Brent has been on 98 Not Out. And I keep asking him, I keep emailing him. And he, he chooses to ignore you. I can't knock the guy for that, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, you'll have to start, you know, you'd do anything for a pound note, wouldn't you? So you just have to off some cash. Rob, what's, what's it been like, the transition from, you know, playing a, a good level then to go into that sky and... I mean, at the time, you've obviously worked with some really big names as well, really big names in cricket. Do you get intimidated, or did you find it difficult at first? Not really, because I sort of think everything's, you know, cricket's a harder game. You know, cricket, someone can, you know, Dave Masters can deck one back and do your first ball, and you look like you're, you know, and it feels like the world's coming to an end. Whereas it's slightly different in commentary, and that you're there to give an opinion, and I sort of back my opinion I suppose on it and you know no and they they're just good people they make it easy um with what I'm doing I suppose and I, I was you know, I've always been very like I did it for a long time I always thought I did an apprenticeship with Sky because I I could do it for sort of 10 12 years before That's right. I actually retired and also it's with a guy today at my daughter's cricket called Alamgir Sherry who played a bit for Kent and Worcester if you remember mm-hmm. and Sherry was a bowler you know, he got 500, but he got sacked. And he didn't get to have his send-off. You know, he didn't get to do everything he wanted in the game. You know, I, when I retired, I was ready to retire. You know, I, I was done. I'd had a great, you know, I'd had not a great career, but I, for me, I'd enjoyed every minute of it. And I was ready to move on. Unlike, you know, Freddie Flint, I finished at 30 with lots more that he wanted to do. Um, so... You know, it, it was quite an easy transition, and I was very, very lucky to have this job with Sky. That it's, um, you know, that it's made it simple. I remember you being one of the first, when they used to have um, a player or two mic'd up during T20 games, and you were always one of those that I remember being being on quite often, and and and, and often being really good value as well. So, <laughs> yeah, a lot of the, a lot of the time when I was um, doing that, I, I, I'd been a pundit in a studio. You know, I started doing. I feel like I earned my corn at Sky with, you know, doing Bangladesh, New Zealand in the middle of the night, stuff like that. So yeah. then a lot of the guys, the producers and stuff, were friends of mine. So when they asked me, I didn't really feel like I had a choice. And also, I, I sort of got early on with T20 in particular. I think cricketers, we think we're much more important than, than actually we are. You know, we're there oh, to yeah. Try and oh, yeah. have a bit of fun and entertain. And any insight, you learn, that's why I learned now on the other side of the fence any insight into what you're doing is is great to see i love watching these documentaries you know whether it's on man city with guardiola anything in from that like the inner sanctum yeah it's great insight and i think we need people to be playing cricket loving cricket so the more of that you can give the more fun you can look like you're having then hopefully the more people want to play it which will mean the game survives what did you think of the the aussie one the test it was amazing. I mean, I like Justin Langer a lot, hmm. and he doesn't didn't surprise me in that at all. And I've seen so many coaches like Justin Langer. You know, they're so intense in a way. Yeah. Um, and it, that's exactly. You know, we all think that once you, uh, there's some of it where you just see really. You know, when he's kicking the bin, you know, and he's <laughs> making them all watch the, the, when they lost the game, like a naughty boy video session. But I've been in so many meetings like that. I've been with so many coaches. I've seen bottles fly across my face as the last wicket goes down and stuff. And, you know, I thought it's just so typical of what a cricket dressing room is. And everyone thinks it's this, especially at international level, it's this, you know, where they've got the the secrets to everything, you know. It's like you're going to, here you're going to find out. But what you realise is they speak as much nonsense as everyone else. (laughs) 
yeah, the Fergie factor. Absolutely, all of that, you know, it's just, it's just exactly what a dressing room's like. I've, I've had all those meetings, you know, where a coach tells you you need to bat for your life, a coach tells you you need to play without fear, all of this stuff, and you're just like, just let me get on with it. <laughs> and then you go out, you get a duck and walk back and think, how am I going to face this? <laughs> I know, exactly, and you, you, you just, you know, it's, it, I thought it was great access. That bit when Steve Smith walks in when he gets hit by Joffre Archer, Oh, I was there, I was I mean, in the long room. Oh, I mean, to get to see into that dressing room. And then that's exactly what, you know, every cricket dressing room is like at that level, from what I can remember. You know, and it's just, you know, the, those Lord's dressing rooms as well. I mean, what fantastic insight. Rob, thanks for taking the time to join us this evening. Pleasure, Lovely boys. to chat to you again. Um, no worries. Before you go, quick prediction for the test. I think England win. I think um, West Indies have uh, been brilliant but England should have too much for them now. Indeed. Rob, thanks for your time, and uh, hopefully we'll all catch up soon now. We might be allowed in some cricket grounds. <laughs> yeah. You never know. <laughs> exactly. yeah, we'll catch up at the ground soon. <laughs> Cheers, Rob. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye. Bye.